This is my office at night. I have two smart bulbs in the room that are controlled by Google, but I can also control them by Home Assistant. I've recently been encountering situations where I don't want to disrupt the silence or the mics on my Google devices are muted. And having a chatbot not only provides a way to control devices, but is one step forward in creating an AI capable of managing my smart home. This is a series where we explore and experiment with exciting smart home devices and interesting tech. And hopefully, somewhere along the way, we create something too cool for words. This is the Home Assistant AI Masterclass. Well, welcome guys to my first video in the AI Masterclass series. So personally, I created this because there's been a lot of occasions where I've wanted to trigger automations using my voice, similar to like what you see with the big three. But since at the time, this wasn't really a possibility, the next best thing was to create a chatbot that I could speak to or type to that could run my commands. Then later I found out that having a chatbot in general was actually pretty useful. So here's what we're gonna learn in this video. We're gonna learn how to set up Telegram. We're gonna show you how to send your first message to Home Assistant using Telegram. Now this is the foundation for everything else that you're gonna learn later on in this series. And if you're wondering when you'll learn how to incorporate ChatGPT into your Home Assistant, that will happen in the next video. But I encourage you to start with this video first because this is where we build the knowledge and the foundation so we can progress to the other stuff. Okay, enough talk, let's learn. So installing Telegram. Just to be clear, it is best if you go to Home Assistant's Telegram's integration page to read through it for yourselves and follow the instructions. The moment I create this tutorial and publish it, might as well we carve it in stone because at some point the tech will change and this will become obsolete. So it's best that you just always refer to the actual integration guides as opposed to this video. And if you're seeing this years later, again, best read the instructions, but far be it from me to stop you from listening to my TED talk. Now, if you're on a Mac or on your phone, download Telegram app and sign up or sign in. Once you have the app, you're going to need to contact the bot father. Yes, I said the bot father. See, this is what happens when you leave developers alone by themselves. They create like entire apps filled with dad jokes. So uh, take it as you will. But once you find the bot father, click the start button, click on this, give your bot a name and a username. And you're gonna to wanna to store the API key somewhere safe and make sure that no one else sees it or place it in a public site. So don't like commit it to GitHub or anything like that. Just in case you can't find your bot, just type in the username that you created for it and it should show up here in the search. All right, so you're also gonna need a chat ID. Search for the get ID bot, click start. You should see your information here along with the chat ID and you're gonna to wanna to store this chat ID too. Now it's time to head into the Home Assistant app. This is where we add the integration in. You'll need studio code, server, or some way to edit your YAML files in Home Assistant. I'm gonna be using the studio code server. So inside Home Assistant, open up studio code server and navigate to your config and add the following. The API key is the same API key that you got from Botfather, and the allow chat ID is the ID that you got from the get IDs bot. After this, just restart your config and you're all set. So how to receive a telegram within Home Assistant. For setting up automations, I use Node-RED. Personally, I find Node-RED's flexibility and visual layout very appealing and it fits my personal development style much better than the YAML-based configs. I'm pretty sure you can do the same thing in YAML that I'm doing in Node-RED, but I will be honest, I don't know how to do this using YAML. As you'll later see later in this series, things become really easy using Node-RED, especially when we're introducing GPT-3 and some of the NLP engines. It's just, it just suits my development style way better. Telegram provides three events that allows you to listen to information. Now we use this events node in order to actually tap into those events. For convenience, I've added these six nodes here so we can get through this quickly. The three nodes on the left are the event nodes. The three nodes on the right are the debugger, which allows us to see what those events are. 
The first event type we're going to look at is called Telegram Text. This fires whenever you simply write plain text inside Telegram and you click send. The second event type we're going to look at is called Telegram Command. This is a bit special because Telegram allows you to fire commands right within the text. So by prefixing your text with a forward slash, Telegram will treat it as a special command and will fire this event. Let's inspect the information that came back from the debugger. When we go into the payload, click on events, we can see that the command is the same as the command that was sent inside Telegram. And then if we check the previous command, we see that forward slash start is the same command that we see inside the debugger. Something additional you should know is that by adding in more words beyond that initial forward slash, we'll treat those additional words as arguments. So the command here would be hello, but you can see that we have world and goodbye as arguments. I want this to be easy to use for everyone else, not just myself. And I personally don't want to remember special commands and realistically using the forward slash and the text, you're activating a special command. I don't want to remember anything like that. I don't expect anyone else to know anything like that. So this is more of like a developer -y hack and I'm trying to avoid that. Now, this is not to say that it's not useful, and I may have a small number of these particular commands that I'll use to trigger systematic changes, but I'm, as a whole, I'm just avoiding it. Now, the last event type is called Telegram Callback. I use this one a lot, but it's harder to demo, so I'll show you an existing automation that I have that uses it. Now, these buttons here are created via an inline keyboard property. I'll go for this in another video, but just quickly to see, when we choose Telegram Bot in the call service, we have this inline keyboard which is responsible for the buttons. So in some circumstances, some of the automations can dynamically generate buttons. In this case, we're asking for the volume to be at 0.25. And instead of giving just a generic yes, no, we also have this third button. When we click it, we can see that the callback type is Telegram callback. I use this event often because it allows me to reduce the guesswork needed to interact with the bot. In some automations, the bot will give users a choice, and if the choices are predefined, I find that it offers a better user experience and better user onboarding. Now that we have the basics down, let's actually trigger automations from Telegram. In Node-RED, we simply need to add the call service node, and under domain, choose conversation, and then process. Now we simply need to pass a JSON object with the specified values. In this case, all we need is to pass text. So we're going to set the text by using this variable here. Now currently at this moment, message.telegram message, that doesn't exist. So if this were to fire, it would be undefined. So what we need to do is we need to define it in the nodes that come before it. So before we get to all of that, we're gonna go and grab this event node and we're basically gonna call the telegram text. Remember, this is the event type for when the user just simply writes plain text in telegram. Now from here, we're gonna, we need to basically see what is inside this particular event. Um, so just to kind of walk through that process, I have this debug node and I'm gonna set it to show the complete message object. So that way when the event fires, we can see everything. And then we're gonna deploy. And then after deploying, we're gonna just write this test text. And we can see that something comes back within the debugger. So when we inspect, we can see in payload and then under events, we can see that the text is equal to test. This is what we want. So we're gonna copy its path and this is what we're gonna use. Now that we have the path of the text, we can now convert that information to the format that we need. So we're gonna use this change node to do that. Now within this change node, it's a bit special. So what we can do is it basically allows us to change one, var uh, one value to another. So we're gonna set telegram message to the path that we just found. So the payload.event.txt. So this is gonna basically take the value from the payload.event.txt and paste it into telegram message. Now, once we connect it, Telegram message will now be complete, so it will no longer be undefined by the time that node runs. But we're gonna do one more thing. 
if we were to just send the message from Telegram now and it completes, nothing is going to happen within Telegram. So the user just won't know. So we're going to use this additional node from the call service and we're going to basically send a message back to Telegram. So to give the user some indication that something happened. In the domain, we're going to do Telegram bot service is going to be send message. And then we're going to look at this message here and we're basically going to send a message using that key. That key is what basically Telegram looks at when it posts messages back to the app. We're going to name the node. We're going to deploy. Why, hello there. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, this video was made a while ago, and between then and now, Home Assistant made several updates. And during one of those updates, the conversation API, which is being used in this process, stopped working. I don't know if it's intentional. I don't know if it's an accident. No idea. But continue watching, and I'll explain a little further how we can work around this. This conversation app process, even though I kind of explained it to you, this is what stopped working. We can't use this anymore. This is technically the whole crux of this particular automation where you receive information from Telegram, you set the property for it, it goes and it gets processed here, and this will actually do the command. So turning on the lights, uh, turning off your alarms, whatever the case is, whatever your automation is, it'll do it if it was within the assists uh, capabilities of doing because it mirrored assist. Now this doesn't work. Technically, I could ignore this, right? We could ignore it. We can move on and let's say just learn how to use the open API around it. Um, but then you kind of lose a lot of the flexibility and power that I wanted the chatbot to have. And it just sucks. It just sucks. If you wanted to, for those of you who use Google, you could just replace it with basically the Google's version. So within here, instead of the conversation, you would choose Google Assistant, and then you would choose under service, send text command. And then now all you have to do is this command is what would be, what you would send to do the command. So like turn off TV, kitchen TV, or whatever the case is, you would just change this to command. And then now it would work. So same exact thing, now it would work. But this would only work for those of you who are using Google within their home as like the Google Assistant. Everyone who's using Alexa, anyone who's using uh, Apple, like anyone else, to be honest, this won't work for it. And that's not good enough for me either. So we need to come up with a different way of doing this. I will tell you from now that this next way may not be the easiest way. It's going to be interesting. It won't be super easy. I will do my best to make it clear in my explanation. So let's go. This is the call service node. When we inspect it and we look at its help properties, we can see here that they have some interesting, helpful tips and tricks. One of the things that caught my eye when I was looking at this is that you can pass things dynamically to it. So for instance, I see here turn underscore payload. If we were to go and check what is here under home assistant and we look at service, we can see that there's turn underscore off, turn underscore on. So what that template did was it allows us to choose which one we want to do. We can have it turn off or on, but dynamically, we don't have to like have it hard coded into here. So this is what we want. And the fact that we can do it here suggests that we can probably do it for all of these other stuff. So what we're looking to do now is to create this node to be dynamic such that when we receive text from Telegram, that we would have some kind of logic that will look at the text and say, okay, within this text, what is the entity that I need and what action needs to be done to it? So if I say turn off the light in the kitchen, then it needs to know that, okay, the entity is a kitchen light and I know that I'm turning it off. And those need to be dynamically placed into the service as well as the entity. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the inject node. What the inject node would allow us to do is it allows us to start an automation without having to do anything besides from press a button here on the screen. And you'll see what I mean shortly. So we can take it, just drag it to it. And then now when we deploy, nothing is gonna happen, or at least you're not gonna see anything, but this button becomes clickable. And when we click it, it'll basically trigger and everything will start from this point moving forward. All right, so then now what we wanna do is we're gonna change this to Home Assistant. And let's see, service we have here, turn on and turn off. 
Uh, for the sake of testing, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to move this to the side. And we can see here that we have several lights on in the house. So we're going to create an automation that can trigger these things dynamically. So I'm going to use a toggle because that's going to be easy for us to see. But instead of hard coding toggle, we're going to have that dynamically passed in. So let's do this. We're going to just call this action. What this is saying is that that action is basically a variable and that variable, if it's whatever that is, it's going to try to run that variable or use that variable as an input for service. So we want this variable action to say toggle, but at the current moment, nothing is defining that variable. We're going to have to define it elsewhere. We're going to just call this entities entities. Now, currently, just like action, entities is empty, but whatever this variable is, it's when it resolves, it's going to get passed into this and it's going to use this as entity field. It's going to use whatever value is entities. So let's go define these things now. We don't need this. I can delete that. That's gone. Let's just click done. And now we're not going to run this from Telegram. We can leave that. Telegram will still work. Uh, but right now, what we're going to do is we're going to trigger the automation from this inject node. So to do that, we first need to pass in those variables. Let me show you what it will look like if we don't do that. So let's deploy. I'll put it onto the debugger. It's done. So when I run it, it's going to fail. See, call service node is missing API service property not found in the config or payload. So it doesn't see anything. It's saying that there's a problem. That's because all of the stuff that we passed it, the entities, the action, all of that is missing. So let's define it now. So we're going to call this action. And we said that we want to call it toggle. And then we're going to come here and we know we have entities. And for this one, because it's an array of items, we're just going to use the JSON or the JSONata. We'll do the open close brackets. And I believe the entity, let's change the office life light left. I believe that's what it's, what it's called. Uh, I could be wrong, but we'll find out. Done. So right now, when we trigger the, this particular entity or when we trigger this node, it's going to now have within its data flowing into the call service node action, which is toggle, and it's going to have entities, which is this. This is now defined. So when we deploy, I'll clear this. Give it a second. I don't know where that happened, but we'll see. And now when we fire it, instantly it worked. This means that we can dynamically change things. And if I press it again, because it's the action toggle, it should turn back on. Perfect. Okay, so let's recap. In total, what we've done in this video is set up Telegram, connect the Telegram to Home Assistant where T Home Assistant can see the information coming from Telegram. And now we've created the latter part where we can dynamically input actions and entities into Home Assistant to do some kind of action in general. The only thing left now is to kind of connect the two pieces together, the front and the back, where now that we have the text from Telegram to translate it or parse it into something that Home Assistant can understand and actually execute commands on. That's going to be a bit tricky, but we're going to handle that in the next video. We can't do that here. It's going to be way too long. I think it's going to be too overwhelming and I have to test a few things out. Bottom line is in the next video, we're going to dive deep into how we can get this to work. Hint, we're going to be using open AI for this. I think you guys are going to love this next video. Stay tuned for it. Okay. Bye.